Hello my friends, how are you doing? Today I'm going to show you some really cool additional ways to create amazing light in your photos. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer sharing my industry secrets with you, so maybe subscribe to my YouTube channel for free. So in my last video I showed you how I created this effect here, you can see this is the original picture, here we have some really beautiful stage light, some smoke in there, some floating dust in there, and this is created with my newest creative pack, Mythical Light Beams. And today I want to show you additionally how to create some atmospheric light around that. And I've actually updated my pro version of the pack to have 15 additional overlays. You can of course use any kind of other overlay you want. So let's grab one of those here and put that in here. You can see I can resize that, I can rotate that, no problem and put that in any kind of situation I want to. Now how to use that is similar to the effect you already have, which is that you simply go to screen and you can see now that I have this lower part with this kind of light and I have the upper part with this kind of light here. And you can see already this creates an interesting atmosphere and here are some additional things you can do. Of course, like I said, you can rotate this to any side if you want to. Now, as you can see here, we have these light streaks and they might not line up with these light streaks over here. Of course, on a stage you can have multiple light sources, so that shouldn't be a problem. But if you don't want to have them, there's a very easy way to just get a very smooth atmospheric light in there. And that is simply to go to the layer effects and use your Gaussian blur like this and you can see they are now gone and I have a very smooth light that has the same coloring and has the same structure over the picture but it doesn't have these rays inside of it. Now because an overlay and PNG is a static pixel layer you can't use it like a gradient but what you can do is that you use over here your mesh warp and with that first of all you have to be a little bit careful because as you can see this is rendering this layer to the size of the image. So the rest is gone now. So maybe you want to have a duplicate of that layer because this is a destructive method. But now what I can do is that I can for example pull this up here and move these sides around, even bend the light into any kind of shape I want. You can see I can make this here, for example, a little bit rounder and you can really zoom out here and uh, put this in any kind of situation, any kind of way you feel like the light should be flowing in your image. Pull this up here so now all of the right side has this kind of violet and blue light in there or you can do any kind of other thing. I can push this down again. I can move these kind of things here over like so to have a smoother light. The only thing you don't want to do is to have these lights inside here because then you get these lines and that's not great. So this is something you want to avoid. But other than that, you have a huge ability to shape that into any kind of look that you want to have. And now I can simply click on apply and this is rendered for me. The layer effect can still be applied to that. This is important for the reason when you stretch it too far, you might get some fragments. It might look pixelated after that, but because it is a smooth light effect, you still can use the Gaussian blur to make it look smooth again. And so everything flows into each other and you have very soft gradients in there still and no fragments, no pixels, right? Let's use another overlay overlay here. For example, one where we have these kind of green colors in here. Let's put this here. So you can see this is super easy. You can simply drag and drop this in here and then you can move this around. Again, let's set this to the screen overlay. And this down here now is green. Now there is two things you can do for that. You can again, like I showed you in my last tutorial, go adjustment and HSL. This is one way. And this might get you some pretty cool and interesting results, but it might also have the problem if there's multiple colors in there that these colors might not fit anymore on how the colors work together, right? Because HSL is shifting all the colors you have in there. So as an alternative, what you can do is that you apply an HSL adjustment for recolor. 
You want to have this in here. Now, there is two ways this jumps into here. One is when you go to your assistant manager and say that you want adding adjustment layers to selection add adjustment as child layer. So this is already set up for you in the right way. If you don't have that and the layer is out here, so everything is recolored, what you want to do is to drag this in here, not with the long blue line, but with the short blue line where you position it between the preview picture and the name of that layer, like so. And as you can see, what's now happening is that all of the layer has this exact red color, which means that you can turn this multicolor overlay into just one color and then you can shift that color around with this setting here, which is similar in the looks from the HSL, but this is only selecting one hue from this rainbow slider here, basically. So you can see, I can still go over to green. I can go for blue or a darker blue or pink or red or yellow, any kind of thing you want, any kind of thing that mixes well with what you want to set up in your picture. So you have a lot of creativity in here. Of course, you can also adjust the saturation in here. I wouldn't use the lightness slider, like I said last time, if you want to adjust the lightness and the contrast, what you should do instead is to create an adjustment for brightness and contrast like this. And here you can see I can make it really bright, which again is a really cool effect. Look at that. It looks really, really amazing. Interesting colors. You can also push up the contrast to have that even more intense or pull down the contrast to make it softer, more foggy from the light. And with this, you can create so many different light situations and really play around forever with that. So these 15 overlays that I have added to that, you can basically make thousands of variations with that. Or like I said, just use some other overlays you find online, but I created these specifically for these kind of light effects. So let's go to another picture real quick and add another one of these layers. Let's go for this one, for example. This has a little bit of a smoky texture in here. So I put some interesting thoughts into what I want to create here, of course. Let's go to screen again and you can see, wow, with just one overlay, you can create a really interesting atmosphere or you just turn this around upside down. Here you have a little bit of smoky blue light if you want to have that. Also, we have this little smoke structure in here or I push this up, creating a really cool contrast between the pink smoke in the lower part and the blue light in the upper part. So this is amazingly easy and at the same time, super effective. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know in the comments if you want to have more of these creative overlay packs and see you in my next tutorial. Bye.